me, when I started writing it, it, it was seven years ago. And the history of residential schools wasn't talked about. It wasn't something that was in the news, wasn't something that families talked about or community talked about. It was really something that was absolutely taboo and that people were afraid of. And I felt like uh, this piece really developed alongside our entire country coming aware of this history. And so it was about having a deeper understanding of these stories, of working to acknowledge and honor the survivors and their descendants of residential schools. It was, it was about having an opportunity to experience a story through the, through the eyes of this family, of recognizing what was lost, that it wasn't just, you know, all these kids that were, that were taken and sent away. It was about that that had a ripple effect for generations and generations. And so maybe if we can understand that, maybe if we can understand how that ripple effect happened, then maybe we can understand ourselves better today. Musical theater is all about when you can no longer speak, you sing. And so I look at it as music furthering a character's journey into their emotion. So it felt very natural to include music as part of this storytelling, to express emotions that were beyond words. Because that's really the situation that, that these young children are in. Often, they can't speak, and so they need to retreat into these moments alone to be able to sort of to unpack what they're feeling and be able to express all the things that they're, that they're facing in these moments. In Indigenous culture, you cannot share a story without that story having a song and without that song having a dance and that dance having a story or telling a story. And so for me, when we were working the show, that wasn't initially what made it a musical, but it was what all of a sudden opened it up for all of us, not only, uh, not only people who know musicals, but also indigenous people, to feel like, oh, that is representative of our culture. That when we would, that it would, uh, that when we would face those, those uh, hardships, we would turn to our culture to save us. There is something different about sitting in a theater with all people, indigenous and non-indigenous people, and having a shared experience in storytelling. Having this be something that you share with the people around you. And so I don't think that it's, that it's something that we can, we can do passively. And so that means showing up and coming to things like Children of God and experiencing the story, even if it's one that you feel that you already know because you, you read it in a textbook or you saw it on the news or in a newspaper. I think that each of us individually need to recognize our personal roles in the process of reconciliation. And I think that this play, this musical, Children of God, is only a part of that larger journey. I'm, I'm ready for it to happen, and I'm ready for an audience to receive it. And, and what I know about this show, what I know for sure, honestly, is that I have no control over it. From the moment I started writing this, I it had a life of its own. So everything that has happened and all these, these things that have, have, have come up with the National Arts and all this, I don't feel that I've even had any part in creating it. It is the story and the message of this work that is at the center of why we're all doing this. And so that's what I'm excited for. That's why I feel that, that this is something that is going to have an impact beyond, you know, me feeling like I, I did a good show. No. This is something that I hope will uh, shift how we understand ourselves.